And the Louisiana Children's Trust Fund has been in existence for 25 plus years. We celebrated 25, our 25th year anniversary two years ago uh, and went throughout the state and talked to our various partners about the success of their programs. Our programs work on the prevention of child abuse and neglect. That's our primary focus, and we do that through small grassroots grants throughout the state of Louisiana. We also have some larger grants than primarily our universities for research, uh, some statewide programs like grandpa Grandparents Raising Grandchildren, Louisiana CASA, uh, and so we're able to work very closely with them, all for the same purpose and same common goal. We don't want any children hurt throughout the state of Louisiana. That's our purpose. We're not here just for today. We are here to start something. We are here to start the movement for foster youth across this country that will lift up their voices, that will lead them into a future that is one that's a bright, happy future of an adulthood that is fulfilling. That's what we're here for today. And all of the partners, all of my colleagues, all of the volunteers, the senator, the, the secretary and all those others that we'll talk to today, this is what it's about. When we look at those pictures of those young people, we have to imagine in our minds the value of a life of fulfillment, of success, that every one of these young people is a potential success story. Every one of these lives is valuable. We believe that every one of these kids needs support, needs a trustworthy adult, needs systems that work, need systems that are well funded. Because I'll say this about the needs of foster youth, there is no better investment that can be made in this country than in the future of our foster children. You can't compare it to a bridge, you can't compare it to a spaceship, you can't compare it to any other item in a budget. The return on this is financial, it's the future and it's human potential. And that's why we're here. So let's start today right here on the steps of the Capitol in Baton Rouge. And let's start across the state of Louisiana. And let's send it out across this great country and let's say the movement for foster youth is starting right now. The movement to lift their voices lifts our lives and our communities and that's what we are about. Are you all on for it? You up for it? I'm for those children. Let's be for them for days and days and years, whatever it takes. And that's where we're going, and along with these wonderful partners uh, that we have here. And so I want to uh, invite John to come back up because it's always important to honor partnership on behalf of these young people. And we have some special awards we'd like to make today on behalf of the partners who have, who have been with us. One of the very important partners is the Department of Children and Family Services. We know that it is unreasonable to expect that government agencies on their own are there to do the full job for these children. We need to be their support. We need to be helping them to do the right job for those children. Another crucial partner in this is the judiciary. And in that connection, we want to provide this award to the Louisiana Supreme Court. There can be no better investment of judicial time, attention, and decision making than in the future of these children. And because the court folks are busy doing other things at the moment, I'm gonna ask John to come up and accept this award on behalf of the Louisiana Supreme Court. And then a very special presentation. I am really delighted to do this for our partner here in the state in the CASA organization, the Louisiana CASA Association. When John mentioned that these events were going to be happen happening, I was so excited to make a commitment to be here with you 
because there could be no better partner on behalf of these children than your Louisiana CASA Association. The people who are standing there doing this work behind your program staff, with your program staff, and for you as volunteers to stand up and lift up that voice for children. So for the Louisiana CASA Association, this certificate of recognition. And I want to do a special round of applause for everyone who volunteers to lift up a voice of a foster youth, whether you're a CASA volunteer or whether you volunteer in a child advocacy center or in one of the other partners who are here, you deserve much more than applause. But applause is what we have at the moment to give you. And let's give it fully. It is so important for advocacy, it's so important that the legislators actually know what these various organizations are doing. Uh, we have nonprofits from North Louisiana, South Louisiana, from, uh, from as far as Monroe to as far as Lake Charles. And they work on different programs throughout the state. The LSU Ag Center uh, is an organization of LSU, it's one of the campuses of LSU, and it's charged with outreach to the public, educational programs like we're doing here, the Little Bookshelf Project. And our project with the Little Bookshelf is uh, targeted toward parents of newborn babies, and we provide them uh, free books uh, for them to read to their children from birth. And we think that the act of reading to your baby, holding and reading to your baby, is a nurturing act. And we know that nurturing, science supports that nurturing is the way to prevent child abuse. It's a, one of the avenues to prevent child abuse. It's very important that we maintain the investment in Louisiana's children. Uh, failure to do so has long-term consequences, not only to the children, but you see it in the juvenile justice system and the adult correctional system. So it's very important that we focus our attention on prevention and ensuring that the children in foster care receive the services they need to become productive adults. The other thing I would like to do is appeal to all Louisiana citizens to consider being foster parents or adoptive homes for children in foster care. We don't have enough and we're in desperate need of those, those resources. The Possibility Project is a program in Baton Rouge that gives teenagers a voice in the community where they wouldn't have one. We talk about issues from violence to uh, domestic abuse to very taboo subjects that a lot of children don't hear about. And we take these, we learn about them, we discuss them in depth about how they can be prevented and what can be done to change this. And at the end of the season, uh, we create a play from the common issues in the cast lives, a completely original musical play that is just incredible to see. And it's a very rewarding experience, and it's changed a lot of lives. Family and Youth is a nonprofit organization uh, based in Lake Charles. We, um, we have eight different programs under us. Um, I'm part of the Leadership Center. Um, we, we have like four different components that make up the Leadership Center. I'm mainly a part of Career Explorations. Um, once a month we'll pick um, a job that we'll go to and they'll explain the ins and outs of each job and each one that we're in and it helps pick a major. And actually it helped me out because about three months ago I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, I graduated last Friday and by being in the Career Explorations and the Leadership Center it helped me kind of get a feel for what I wanted to be when I grew up and I decided to pick a major uh, dealing with business. And, um, well, Cody you knows the civic part because that's what part he's in. But uh, we also have civic engagement, which brings us here and uh, gets us involved with the legislator and it sees how bills pass and let us meet with important people who, who actually have something to do with government. And if you had asked me a, a while ago about that, I wouldn't know anything about government at all. So it's really life changing. It's a experience, and uh, we go to different schools and people apply. We recruit people to come in, but it's an awesome experience. I feel like it's life changing. Today, several of the partnering organizations were here at the Louisiana State Capitol. Today we talked to legislators from throughout the state. It was an opportunity for the various groups that we partner with to come talk to their legislators about their various programs. Because advocacy is such an important issue. And the only persons that are better to advocate for themselves are the people that work in those organizations. Today we are concerned about Louisiana's children, our most precious resource. As I look back, we always talk about 
uh, the way that the Children's Trust Fund was formed. And people said that there were trust funds for our highways. We had a highway trust fund. We, and, and so people said, well, if we have a highway trust fund, why don't we have a trust fund for our most precious resource? And, that, and that's it, our children. So that's how the Louisiana Children's Trust Fund was formed. The program that I am involved with with Boys and Girls Club is Get Real About Violence which uh, what we do, we go into the um, elementary schools, pre-K to fifth grade. We serve 10 parishes. We do a five-day program, uh, eight-day program uh, in these parishes. And uh, what we're really talking about, we're going into the schools and talking about preventing bullying, teasing. We want to have the nonviolent um, behaviors in these schools. Um, we do an after. We do also an after-school program in our after-school sites here in the East Baton Rouge Parish, uh, and we also uh, take care of all those elementary schools. Um, Get real about violence has been in uh, existence for quite a few years, and Children's Trust has given us the funding for this over these many years, and we're so grateful to them in serving our four regions that we we're involved with with Children's Trust. Um, I've been involved with the Get Real About Violence program probably about 10 years, and we've seen the effect over the children over these many years. We do pre-post tests, and so we can see uh, the levels of what they're getting from it. Our instructors are trained, and they go into these parishes, into the schools. Uh, they present the programs. There's a lot of role play, and so the children will build up their character. They'll understand how to be a friend, uh, what it means to be a bully and not to be bullied, and so they can, we give them the tools so they can work with that, so they can actually, if they're a bystander of something going on, then they'll be able to know what to do and, and how to take care of it, and not just not say anything, but they can go to an adult and talk to that adult about it that they trust and get some help. And that's what we do with Get Real About Violence. In our project, The Little Bookshelf, we are in 12 parishes now through the generous funding of the Children's Trust Fund. The Participants in our program, they receive, as mentioned before, 12 free books during the first year of their baby's life, plus a bookshelf. And here's an example of it. And so they get a little temporary bookshelf. It's, a, it's, it's just a little thing, but uh, we want them to treasure their books. So we want the mother or the father to learn uh, to read to their baby a lot especially at night when they go to put them to bed and uh, to learn to treasure books and to value them so they get this by the end of the project. We provide a wide variety of services. I guess I could lump them into um, three categories. Information and referral would be one. A lot of parents um, just call when they don't know what else to do and where to go for a particular resource and we're pretty good at helping them figure that out. Another thing that we do is education and training. We have free workshops that are open to anyone in the community to learn about their rights um, for their child, whether it's in the school system or um, a workshop related to a specific disability like autism. And then we also offer a lot of parent support, a lot of um, support groups. We have a parent-to-parent -parent program. And then aside from that, there's just a lot of different other programs that we have. Ambassadors in Action is a program for high school students, juniors and seniors. We have Access, which is a program to help kids with disabilities get adaptive equipment that they otherwise couldn't pay for through Medicaid or their insurance. We have um, a separate resource center inside of our organization called SOAR, which stands for Strengthening Outcomes with Autism Resources. It's an autism resource center. Um, the list just goes on and on. We have SAGE, which stands for Self-Advocates Gaining Empowerment. It's an, a group for adults 18 and older to get together on a weekly and monthly basis. Just a large variety of things to engage people in the community that have disabilities and their families. Grandparents Raising Grandchildren Information Center of Louisiana. We have a long name. It's an organization to help grandparents and other people who are raising children that aren't their own to find, find out how to navigate the systems and find out what kind, any assistance that they need, where they can go and get the help that they need. Uh, we have an annual conference and uh, that's one way they can get a lot of the information at our conference. I have four grandchildren that I'm raising, not just one. And it, like I say, without grandparents raising grandchildren support group, 
I wouldn't be able to make it. Louisiana has the third highest rate in the nation of children who are not living with their parents and we would like to be able to try to do something about that. I have the ninth grandchild that we have raised all or part of their lives currently living with us. And thanks to, the, to Dot and the group, I knew Dot back before the group, and uh, she got me into what legal rights that grandparents have. No matter what, grandparents have legal rights with their grandchildren. And that's something that many grandparents don't know, that regardless, they have rights. When we take a case, it's a, it's a, a case that's in the system, there's been arrest made, and you have this child that's been abused and they're in this little shell. They, they feel less than human. They feel down on themselves. And, and we come in and try and boost their esteem and befriend them, empower them so that they can grow up and become part of society and they don't repeat the same process, the same thing that happened to them. We call it breaking the chains of child abuse. So this child's empowered, comes up, becomes a viable citizen in society and doesn't repeat the same things that was happening to them. One thing we do that's very important is when the case, the child's case comes to court, the child has to go in the courtroom and face that perpetrator. And a lot of times that child's going to be terrified. And we will accompany the child to the courtroom and let them know we're watching out for them. We're not going to let anybody hurt them. There's no reason for them to be afraid. And that way they'll give the proper testimony to send that perpetrator to jail for hopefully life. And I'll never hurt another child again. Uh, one of our programs we have at the Center for Family Empowerment, which is we use to engage families in family literacy and parental engagement, is our Family Literacy Academy of Baton Rouge. It's housed at Dalton Charter Elementary uh, in Baton Rouge, and parents get to go to school with their children. While their children are in class, they get to work on their GED earn uh, education and further themselves so they can better take care of their families. And the children also get education. And I have with me today our adult educator, Howard Veter, and our, one of our parent educators and family advocates, Carlette Perkins. Uh, and they work tirelessly with the parents to make sure that they get the education they need, that their children get the education they need, and that they learn how to live together as a family. If people would like more information, where can they go? They can call us at 225-338-0028, uh, or you can go online to ywca-br.org. If you have a concern and have concern about our most precious resource, our children, please take the opportunity to talk to your legislators. Talk about the importance of funding programs that are going to assist them to make sure that we prevent our children from being neglected, whether it be in, in, in pre-K programs, whether it be in beta clubs or in high schools, whether it be in prevention programs that work on making sure that children aren't abused or neglected. We want to make sure that our children, our most precious resource, are, are looked after and cared for. It, being nurturing the children, I, I just can't understand how someone can hurt a child or, or, or be neglectful to that child. You know, but please take the opportunity, contact your legislators, contact your local officials, and let them know how important our children are because they are our most precious resource.